All right. Uh, so those are all the announcements, and I think we have a lot of great things to show off next. So first off is uh, Teresa. Teresa is going to be showing off a demo of the new Handlebars Planner that's going to be coming uh, soon with the 1.0 SDK. So Teresa, I'll hand off to you. Hey, so I'm Teresa for um, those of you who haven't met me yet. So um, in the past couple of weeks, we've been testing different planners in different programming languages to one, replace the current sequential planner and the stepwise planner that we have. We were just testing them and they weren't as reliable as we wanted them to be. So we've been testing them in different programming languages such as Python, c -sharp, JavaScript, and Handlebars. Um, today, I'll be demoing the Handlebars one because our philosophy going into this for the ideal planner language was we wanted it to, one, be well known and understood by the model. And then on a similar vein, we also wanted a language that had constrained functionality and syntax to minimize like, the chance of the model hallucinating functions whether the functions are irrelevant or incorrect. And um, also the language wanted to, we wanted it to be expressive um, enough to represent complex plans and workflows um, as many of you guys have requested to accommodate like a wide variety of requirements and scenarios for our users. And ultimately we landed on um, handlebars for the ease and the security of the templating language. Um, we have full control over the functions that are executed um, at the time of the template render, rather than like for Python or for JavaScript, having a block of code to be executed as the plan, which just came with a multitude of security concerns. Um, so I'll show, I'll demo this, but because we control the handlebars instance, we explicitly define all the functions as handlebar helpers in order to enable any operations before we execute them. Um, and let me share my screen. Yes, OK, so for the handlebars planner, um, we chose the handlebars planner because we have complete control over um, like the functions that can be executed in the plan as compared to like one of the actual programming languages like Python or JavaScript, where we would get a block of code back and we would kind of have to execute that code as the plan. So that came with a multitude of security concerns. With the handlebars instance, we have to explicitly register um, each function that we want to expose to the handlebars instance as a helper. And that's how we get to control um, all the operations that the planner, the handlebars planner is able to run. Um, for like the handlebars, so in semantic kernel today, we already have support for handlebars templates for your semantic functions. So you can, um, that's in a completely different um, folder. So that's under like the template engine handlebars. So if you have a handlebars template, you can run that as a um, semantic function. And, or just a function or plugin. And, but for the Handlebars Planner, we had these extensions because we wanted to bake in some custom functionalities like common operations that the planner tended to hallucinate. Um, for instance, like concatenation or different comparison um, utility functions. So this will hopefully be integrated with the broader template engine in the coming week. That's what I'm currently working on right now, but you'll be able to find that under the handlebars planner today. So the handlebars planner has three different kind of helpers for um, exposed to it in the handlebars instance today. So you have all the functions that are available in the kernel. You have the system helpers, the ones that I just mentioned that we bake in, the custom ones, and then you have the built-in handlebars helpers such as like each um, and conditional. So that enables loops and conditionals in the planner, which we didn't have in the sequential planner before. So you can see like the render process for it here in this file, the handlebars template engine extension. And then the handlebars planner file is when where, where you actually get to see the plan creation process. So it all starts here with the create plan async. And I've split everything like into all these like private methods right here all kind of feed into this create plan method this higher one and i tried to split it so it became more manageable so you guys can see how the 
available functions manual is built. And then the handlebars template is this semantic function that we execute. I'll go through that in detail in just a second. And then um, we also support complex types now. So that's like a pretty big um, change coming with V1 is we have complex type definitions for all of the parameters, um, inputs or outputs. So this is really helpful, especially with the, the open API um, plugins that you import. So then you can have complex payloads and the planner is able to identify the structure of these a lot better now um, and actually like pass in a object that makes sense to the functions trying to invoke. And so that's the planner. And then it outputs this kind of handlebars plan um, right here. And this handlebars plan is just a custom class where the template itself is, the handlebars template is what represents the plan. I'll show examples of that whenever we run the samples. And then you also get to see the prompt that was used to create that plan. And then this kernel instance is what's used to actually invoke the plan. So whenever you have a plan, you can just have the plan and then run invoke on it and then it essentially what happens is it renders the template and it invokes all those functions as specified by the plan so we can um, pivot over to the prompts because this is where like the bulk of the magic happens right now we kind of have two versions of the prompt and i've split them up because Currently, the handlebars planner is already in the semantic kernel repository if you guys want to take a look at it and play around with it. But um, this, the prompt has both versions of this um, prompt that I'm about to show you. So I split it up just for ease of the demo. But there's one version that allows loops, and then the other version doesn't allow loops. So what I found with testing is if you're testing with GPT-35 Turbo, it is able to handle loops, but it just doesn't handle loops as well as GPT-4. So um, I configured like the kernel syntax example to automatically switch between these two templates, um, just so you can kind of get a visual on like the limitations of the different models. But um, this one right here is the one with the loops enabled. So the planner itself does really well with um, like scheduling the loops and then putting the logic within each of the loops. So we first start off here with an example just of how it is able to um, like syntactically structure the plan and uh, how it can call functions, just give it a uh, firsthand example. And then here we define all of the different helpers that it's able to use. So we start off with the baked in um, handlebars helpers. So these help helpers are just part of the handlebar syntax right off the bat. So if, unless each, those are the conditions and the loops I'm talking about. And then we bake in our own custom helpers down here to help it use the loops and the conditionals and also just for like other common utility functions that it tended to hallucinate such as like comparison. And then these right here, set and get are two of probably the most important helpers that we bake in because it, um, keeps the structure to like variables really well and just data handling. And then JSON and concatenation, also two big utility functions that it tended to hallucinate. And JSON itself just stringifies whatever the object is. So then you kind of get this readable object out. And then this is where we put in the support for the complex type definitions. We essentially print out the schema um so then it knows and then down here we loop through all the functions that are available in the fern uh in the kernel and print out the description and the parameters and then the output and then these are just some of the like tips and tricks um that we give it to in order for it to actually structure the plan and this handlebars planners is like very reliable as compared to like the old sequential planner that we had and it's able to complete the goal pretty easily um, and then over here is like the no loop one. So you can see like each, it's basically it, um, omitting the each helper that's baked into handlebar. So we just don't have any examples of it. And then we don't include it here in the out of the box helpers, but essentially everything else is pretty much the same. And I'll put links to this in the chat so you guys can follow this a little easier. But in the kernel syntax examples, we have this example 65. Um, for the handlebars planner. And there's um, a ton of different samples in here where you just kind of have one where a plan's not possible, like you don't have enough functions in the kernel to fulfill the goal. 
um, and then some basic examples and then examples with complex types. And then these samples get more complex as you run them. Um, so you can see like a demonstration of how to use the planner here where you import whatever functions you want first into the kernel. That's the basic setup. But in order to actually use the planner, you instantiate um, a planner and then you create the plan. And then if you want to inspect the plan, you can go ahead and print it out and um, and then you could invoke the plan. And this is already configured to like print out everything for you. So if you just want to run this example, you would just go to the program file under kernel syntax examples, set up all of your um, Azure OpenAI or OpenAI keys, and then change the filter to either handlebars or 65 or whatever example that you want to use. And you can just either run it from the terminal using .NET run, or if you're in VS code, you can run it from the run and debug like file over here. So um, hopefully this will be kind of fast. If not, I already ran it um, over here so you guys could see it. But let's see. While, while we're waiting for this, Teresa, um, could you mm -hmm. maybe share anecdotally like how better is it? Maybe some metrics or things compared to previous planners? Yeah, so I don't have. Um, like quantitative metrics for the previous planners. Um, they were just able, when I, we built some integration tests that we were running and the more like plugins and functions that we fed into the kernel as available functions, it like started to fail like kind of almost immediately like in pretty low numbers of plugins. So that's why we decided to like start rebuilding the kernel and or the planners. And this one, like it's with GPT-3.5 Turbo, um, like I mentioned before, it doesn't handle loops as well, but it was still like pretty like 75% like reliable when I was running just this example. And like right here, this first example, it should explicitly say that helpers, more helpers would be required if there's not enough available functions. With GPT-4, it passes like over 90% of the time as expected, has the expected behavior. Um, with loops or without loops. Um, without loops, it is like almost like always um, passing as expected. So let me go over these examples really quick where, so I already showed you guys this first one. The second one just gives it uh, um, some dictionary plugins and then it's able to like get the plan. You can see the plan itself is a handlebars template. It should guide you in the different steps that it's um, planning with comments. And then you can see here, the data management is a lot better because we expose this set and get helpers in order for it to explicitly um, define the data that it's passing around. And then this is the result. It's able to like format the result better because of these baked in helpers. Here, it's trying to write a poem and then translate it. We um, put in multiple plugins and it's able to like bring it down to the writer plugin. And then this one is we're trying to get it to write a chapter book. This kind of takes a little while. I don't know if it's going to like how fast it really is going to be. So we're just going to pivot over to this other um, tab where I already ran it. So you can see that it's able to use the loop and then for each of the chapters it can write out the chapter and then it prints out the book content. So it just concatenates each chapter into the book content and then prints it out. So you can see chapter one here, chapter two, I don't know where chapter two is. Yeah, chapter two and then chapter three should be down here somewhere. Yeah, chapter three. And so it's able to like plan out all of that. And then for this last example, I print out the plan so you guys can kind of see like what the actual prompt looks like whenever we pass it to the planner in order for it to create a plan. So you have this example right here. Um, and then all like the different baked in helpers. What I wanted to show here was how the complex types are dynamically um, printed to the 
prompt before you pass it. So this dictionary entry is a complex type that has the word and the definition properties. And then down here, like whenever it's specifying like what's gonna output, it knows exactly like what this function is gonna output or what this function expects to get in. So um, this is super helpful with like complex payloads whenever you're working with um, various plugins. And it's it can pass in those complex payloads or complex objects between different function calls by first assigning it to a variable and then just passing it as the input to the next one. Um, and so that's it. I'm sorry that was fast. I know I talk really fast, but you guys can ping me um, offline and I can help answer any questions. Um, yeah, and then you can run these examples by yourself. Like Chris mentioned, all the kernel syntax examples are can be run from program.cs. Awesome. This is really good. Thank you, Teresa. I'm glad your connection got fixed. <laughs> but but yes, uh, as she mentioned, right, there's lots of examples, lots of great content that will be that's already there, but also will be circulated, especially as we finalize 1.0.